In this video we will look at charcoal cooking and its relation to air quality in cities around the world. Globally, 3 billion people cook on charcoal and wood fire stoves, particularly in many African and Asian countries. In Uganda, 94% of the rural population use wood fires. In urban areas, charcoal fires are more common. This holds particularly for poor households and those in small villages and slums. Although in more developed cities, alternatives such as cooking on gas or oil are more common, wood stoves are still the norm in many peri-urban areas. Charcoal and wood fires produce large amounts of smoke, and because many of the traditional stoves burn inefficiently, the fuel use is high. The stoves are typically used in small kitchens, a special section of the house. As such, indoor kitchens the ventilation is poor and the fire produces highly toxic fumes. An important component of the smoke is black carbon. Black carbon consists of the smallest particles in particulate matter, those with a diameter smaller than one micrometer. Because the black carbon is so small, it penetrates deep into the lungs when inhaled, where it damages the lungs. It may even be taken up into the bloodstream, where it can cause cardiovascular diseases. Here you see a graph of the black carbon concentrations in Amsterdam. Typically, these are uh, between 1 and 4 microgram per cubic meter. In many African cities, however, the outside concentrations of black carbon are already relatively high, up to 25 microgram, as you can see in this graph from Arba Minch in Ethiopia. This is, amongst others, caused by garbage burning and old diesel trucks. However, the air outside is still relatively clean compared to the air in kitchens where citizens cook on charcoal or wood-fired stoves. Here the concentrations are typically 250 microgram per cubic meter, and they may even reach up to 1,500 microgram per cubic meter, a concentration that is hundreds of times higher than the World Health Organization advises. Besides black carbon, nitrogen dioxide, an irritating gas that also causes breathing problems. Preliminary research by master's students in our department has shown concentrations of 700 to 1000 microgram per cubic meter inside a wood-fired kitchen. Levels that are toxic and about 20 times the WHO limit values. Traditional cooking may take a long time. During these hours, the smoke is inhaled by the cook and by other people in the kitchen, mostly women and children. The concentrations this high are a serious health threat. It causes acute breathing problems, eye irritation, pneumonia, and in the long run, asthma and cardiovascular diseases. Here you see a photo we made of a graph made by a doctor in a rural hospital. The graph suggests that pneumonia is by far the most important cause of child mortality among his patients. It is estimated that 3.8 million people die annually from the effects of indoor air pollution and 20,000 of those people in Uganda alone. This makes inhaling toxic smoke from charcoal and wood-fired stoves the second largest health risk in Uganda. More than 50% of the cases of pneumonia with children under five are caused by smoke from indoor cooking, and as such, it is the prime cause of child mortality in Uganda. This implies that indoor cooking on charcoal and wood-fired stoves causes more casuals than casualties than AIDS, malaria, and TBC combined. It turns out that women and children carry a much larger part of the smoke-induced health problems than men, because often women are responsible for cooking and for caring for the children. Pneumonia is an important cause of child mortality and asthma and COPD for adult disease and premature death. It is clear that indoor charcoal and wood stoves cause immense health problems and premature mortality, particularly for women and children. Alternatives such as fuel-efficient stoves, kerosene or gas stoves, or ele even electrical cooking are being offered by the WHO, United Nations, and many NGOs or private initiatives. 
We'll now look at a short video that shows an example of such an improved cookstove. Naitwa Alema Mwakalogo, ni mwalimu wa shule ya msingi Lyoma, nimeolewa nina watoto wawili. Kabla ya jikokoa nilikuwa natumia majiko tu yale mengine ya udongo ambalo lilikuwa linachukua mkaa mwingi ambapo yalikuwa yanamaliza sana mkaa. Yalikuwa yanaisha sana. Watoto wangu wanalifurahia. Tena wananiambia kwa nini mama ulikuwa hujalinunua siku nyingi. Stoves as the one Remehu uses can be promising tools to fight the health effects of charcoal cooking, especially when they are combined with a range of other options, for example cooking outside, building a small chimney or opening a window. They would all significantly improve the quality of the air that people breathe. However, many such alternatives are not widely adopted. In conclusion, indoor cooking on charcoal and wood fire is a serious cause of indoor pollution uh, and related health risks. Although there are technologically viable options to avoid breathing, a large part of these, the adoption of such uh, solutions remains limited. <laughs>